Yo, what's good, y'all? No mercy. Trap New York shit. No mercy I know what time it is. Um, KOTD town business call is crazy. You feel me? Like day one and day two. You feel me? Like it's it's not like listen, man. Both days is fire. I wish I'd be able to pull up and go out there, but you know I'm gonna have to um cop the pay per view, but. I honestly feel like this is one of the king of the dot best cards in the minute. You feel what I'm saying? And it's not just because disaster is on the card. You understand? Um, A lot of people are saying that, you know, pretty much because disaster is back. Um, essentially, it brings KOTD back. But my thing is this. These matchups make a lot of sense on their platform. You feel what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these matchups are, are good style-wise. And it's just like, these matchups is crazy. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> we're going to start with day one. I'm going to do day two in a separate blog. Um, or I might just meld these shits together. But, you know, I'm going to do it in a separate video. And, you know, we'll just take it from there. Um, active versus Oops. Now, I'm going to keep it a buck. I haven't really... Watch active. I don't think I've ever seen an active battle. Like, you know, just keeping it a buck. Not trying to shit on his talent. But um, I just, nothing of his has hit my radar yet that people are saying, like, yo, you got to go watch this active battle. I, 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 you feel what I'm saying? So um, I, I got to see what's up with him. Like, if, if he's making it to a, a card like this, then he obviously got to, you know, have something. But, you know, a lot of times when I do see his name, it's like on the bottom of, the, of a flyer or something. So it's like, I, I got to watch him and see, you know, what's really up to really gauge. But man, oops. Oops is like, when it come to substance, talking that street shit, like oops, one of them niggas that got it, man. You feel what I'm saying? Like, um, if I remember correctly, his last time on KOTD was against XL. They was in a small room. And that battle, to me, is still like a classic to this day. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it really brings back that small room feel. And that's what Oops is good for. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Oops in them small rooms. He's good on the big stage, but in the small room, he definitely going to shine. So, a card like this, man, I don't know. I got to watch Active to really um, give an honest opinion on this battle. But I'll be done watching him by the time, you know, the pay-per-view start and everything. So, I'm going to see what's up. But, um, I'm... I'm I'm hyped to see Oops back in the loop and, you know, battling on a regular basis. You feel me? Mad Flex versus A Ward. That's a battle. That's a battle. You feel me? That That's a battle. Um, My last time seeing Mad Flex was against XL. And um, he, he was fire in that battle. He was fire. Like, I liked his energy. I liked the way he set his shit up. Um, A Ward is dope as hell. Um... I don't know what it is with A Ward that I just feel like A Ward it might be missing something. I'm not sure what it is, but I do feel like, um, as far as star power goes, I feel like A Ward is one of them people that really stands out. He's just missing like one thing to really like push him over. But um, him and Mad Flex, man, I don't know. I think I might have to go with A Ward on this one, man. I might have A Ward 2 1. I feel like A Ward comes with a little bit more substance. He he has more stuff that's like, I want to say it's relatable. You feel what I'm saying? Um, Mad Flex is dope. I like the way he set up his punches and everything, but I pretty much feel like in a battle like this, star power is going to shine a little bit more. And I feel like A Ward kind of got that. So I'm going to go with A Ward 2 1 in this battle. Pass versus Ill Will. Man. Paz, Paz versus Ill Will. <sighs> I'm not too big of a Paz fan, man. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. Paz just don't do it for me. Like, I'm not saying he's trash. I don't think he's whack. But he's another one of those guys that I feel like he's been around for a long time. And, like, Paz is one of those guys that I feel like he's been around for a long time. And by now... It's a, certain, it's a certain impact he should have made. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't feel like it's just because he's on KOTD and hasn't really been on URL yet. I, I really feel like he's just missing something. Like, he don't do no interviews. He don't do no media. Like, he don't give you a chance to really get to know who he is to really 
understand his story a bit more because battling for a long time is cool. But at the same time, you have to have a way to get to the fans and for the fans to be able to like relate to you in some fashion and kind of just be able to follow your story and pass. I don't really get that from him. Like he's just somebody who just happens to be around. You understand what I'm saying? And like I said, once again, not saying he's whack, but he just don't really, he, like I said, he's just one of those people that seems like he's just around. You understand what I'm saying? And it will, man. I don't think he's going to beat Ill Will. I don't think he's going to get around against Ill Will to be, you know, completely honest with you. Ill Will is just one of them niggas, man. Ill Will bring everything. He going to bring the freestyles. He going to bring the jokes. He going to bring them crazy haymakers, that street shit. Like, he got, I got Ill Will 3 0 this battle, man. No bullshit. Big K versus Rum Nitty. This matchup crazy. Style wise, this matchup is different. You feel me? Um, I'm not even going to say it's a mirror match because it's not. Um, I feel like Big K is more of a back-to-back -back puncher, but his joints are like one-liners. Um, as far as Rum Nitty goes, man, the way Rum Nitty be setting his shit up and the way his, his delivery is and the way his joints hit, I don't know, man. And Big K ain't really been doing too good lately, so... I don't know. I got Rum Nitty taking this one clear, man. I got Rum Nitty taking this one clear. I don't think Big K is whack at all. I don't think he's trash. I think when it comes to punching, he's one of the best ones. But as of late, I don't feel like he really been focused and really putting his all into it. So I don't know, man. I'm Right now, I'm going with Rum Nitty, man. I'm going with Rum Nitty. Um, I think Rum Nitty might get every round. Keep it completely honest with you. You feel what I'm saying? If Big K happened to sneak in the round... I won't be surprised, but I got Rum Nitty clearly taking this one. Geechee Gotti versus Head Ice. Ugh. Listen, man. Haul them all day. Haul them all day in every situation, but I can't be biased here. I don't think Ice going to beat Geechee, man. I don't. Like, Ice one of the niggas who... He been around for a long time. He a legend in my book at this point. You understand? Like, he done had the KOTD chain. He's one of them niggas you could really look at, like, when it comes to star power. Like, he's on that level with, like, goods, lux. One of them niggas who presence alone grabs grabs the crowd. But Ice, I feel like he kind of, he, he like, he'll have spots where he's wilding. And then he'll have spots where he's kind of fizzling out. And I feel like Geechee Gotti is a bit more consistent. You feel what I'm saying? So Geechee going up against Ice. I, I think Geechee going to sneak this one, man. I got Geechee with a, with a, I got Geechee with a clear 2-1. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I think Geechee hold approach to this as far as him being that, that gangbanger, that young gangbanger in the hood going up against the, the older nigga on the block, like, this going to be an interesting matchup, though. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Like, watching them two dynamics talk to each other, like, if you a person who really been outside and you see, like, the, if you see, you if, if you, if you been outside, you see the dynamic that I'm talking about. This is an interesting matchup. I think Geechee going to get it, but I still think it's an interesting matchup regardless. You feel what I'm saying? Just, you know, the type of shit they talk and all that, like, this matchup is going to be crazy. And... The top of the flyer, Ilmac versus B Magic. Man, this gonna be a bar fest like a motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? Like, um, I think Ilmac and Magic gonna be a classic. You feel me? Um, Ilmac dope as hell. Um, I feel like he has a little bit more substance than Magic as far as like he's gonna attack you with personals. He's gonna like he's gonna be one of those people who's more direct. You feel what I'm saying? Magic, um, Magic is direct. He punches. He also does name flips. But I feel like Ilmac tries to take angles on you, which kind of stick a little bit more. And, um, I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all while I'm here on this, um, this prediction blog. I think Ilmac a smoke loaded Lux. Like, if you really look at Ilmac work and the way he approach battles, I think Ilmac versus Lux would be an interesting battle. You feel what I'm saying? Take my word for it. You feel me? I think that would be interesting to see. 
You understand? Like, a lot of people probably disagree with me. Y'all probably gonna troll me in the comments, but I think Ilmac and Smoke Lux, man, y'all, man, listen. KOTD need to set that up, man. That's that's a battle I'm really interested in seeing. You feel me? But um, as far as Ilmac versus Magic go, um, I feel like what Magic lacks as far as, like, taking angles, he, make ups for, he makes up for with his punching. You feel what I'm saying? So this battle, I got this shit going 2-1 either way. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I think Magic going to be in there <laughs> punching his head off. And, you know, Ilmac going to have some dope setups. He going to take some good angles. But I feel like overall, it's just going to be a super clash between the both of them. So I got 2-1 either way, man. So that's my prediction blog for day one. Um, you'll see day two right behind this. So, yeah, stay tuned. No mercy. Trap New York shit. No mercy. I'll see you. Yo, uh, what's good, y'all? Back to discuss um day two. It's KOTD Town Business Card. You feel what I'm saying? Um, now day two. There's a lot of the guys on here that I haven't watched. I haven't seen a battles. Um, but I'm used to seeing their names like on flyers and things of that nature. So that I'm I'm familiar with them in the fact that I know they're working. You understand when I'm seeing names that's actively booked and then they make it to a card like this, then I'm going to assume they've been doing enough to get, you know, uh, doing enough quality performances to get put on, you know, what's going to be a big card. So, um, you know, um, I'm going to go through these as best I can. Um, so severe Ron Compton. Um, I'm, I haven't watched either one of them, but, they're two guys that I've seen both of them on, you know, tons of flyers. So I know they've been working. Um, Saint, I'm actually familiar with. I forgot who he battled on KOTD. I think it was Eddie I. And I remember that being a fire battle as far as like these being two guys I was looking forward to seeing on KOTD more. You know, um, I would hope that in the future. Battlers like that get more of a push, you know, on KOTD because those are two guys who are upcoming at a fire. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like the KOTD platform is perfect for what they do. So I would definitely want to see them start to, you know, get pushed a little more. Um, Gray Fox, I'm not familiar with. Never really seen the name. Um, Reverse Live, I've definitely seen on cars before. I honestly haven't watched the battle yet. Um... Bobby Lee, he's another person. I actually was talking to Bobby Lee before about um us doing some work on a track one day. So, you know, I'm glad to see he made it here. So, um, you know, I know he's been working like a motherfucker. Um Frack. I'm not familiar with Frack. You feel me? Um he's somebody I know has been working because I see him like it's like every time I see him, he's moving up in terms of status, card position. You know, and just more people talking about him. So I know he's been working, but um battling Excel, buddy. Excel, one of the best pens in the game. He don't lose battles. Like, you got your work cut out for you, man. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to X. X been grinding like a motherfucker. Like he doing his music. Um, he he still is a very active battler. And every time he shows up, he's giving you a quality performance. You feel what I'm saying? So I would hope KOTD just start pushing him a little more too, showing him more love. And um, I wouldn't mind seeing X and Chilla go at it for the chain. You feel what I'm saying? Like that could be Massacre 5 or 6 or something. You know, X versus Chilla. You know, not just for the chain, but, you know, if that's in Massacre and that's going to be in Boston, that could be the, the battle for the town. You feel what I'm saying? So... That'd be a battle where everything's on the line. You feel what I'm saying? Not just the chain, but, you know, for the town itself, man. Shit, the whole fucking state probably come out for that one. You feel me? Um, Bonnie versus Rx. Now, um, I'm going to keep it a buck. Over the years, it, it's been hard for me to take Bonnie super seriously as a battler, just because of all the, uh, you know, ghostwriting stuff, um, I mean, she even admitted, 
to, you know, at one point having a ghostwriter, like the time when um, she was given some bars that somebody ghost wrote for her and the ghostwriter stole the bars like from a website or something like that. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like you admitted to having the ghostwriter. So I can't really, and, and I seen, um, I believe it was an interview she had where she was, you know, talking about how, you know, she, she, you know, be putting in a lot of work, taking a lot of battles, et cetera, et cetera. But overall, man, you, you can't put yourself in a position where you're taking all these battles to get bread. But at the same time, you're saying like, yo, I'm, I'm going to people for help with writing and, you know, things of that nature for, it's like, you know, if, if you got to put yourself in that position, you better off just not, you know, taking the battles. Like, you know, I understand everybody got to eat. Everybody got families to feed, but you know, I'm I'm from I'm from the old school with this with this hip hop shit, man. Like ghostwriting was always a no no. You understand what I'm saying? Like you you just can't stress enough like how you gotta be completely original. You gotta write your own material. Like part of hip hop is writing your own shit and it coming from your actual experiences and coming from the heart. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do that by getting material, you know, from somebody else. So, you know, um, I respect Bonnie and I respect the work she always put in. You know, I, I don't feel like every time she battles, she has a ghostwriter. But, I mean, you, you've you been put out there as far as, like, the instances, and, you know, enough instances where you have had a ghosty. So it's like, it, it's really hard to, you know, really get behind her and, you know, really root for her when... You know, she having, you know, ghosty day once in a while. Um, but, and, and and another thing too, her, her QB performance wasn't all that. So, I would hope with her going up against someone like RX who is on the come up. She just had a dope main stage performance against um, Torture. Listen, RX is going to be one of them. She can possibly become one of them next Queen of the Ring legends. I'm going to keep it up. You feel what I'm saying? Like, she got the whole Spanish thing going on where she could flip in and out between English and Spanish. Her delivery fire. Like, RX be talking. You feel what I'm saying? And I feel like she... If we look at their last two performances, you look at Bonnie versus QB and RX versus Torture, RX will fuck around and smoke Bonnie. Like... If Bonnie don't come with it, Rx is going to 3-0 her. Like, easily. You feel what I'm saying? I already feel like style-wise, Rx is the better battler in this matchup. You feel what I'm saying? So, I'm going to keep it a buck, man. I got Rx with the clear 2-1, possibly 3-0. Um, I just haven't really been impressed with Bonnie lately. So, I, I think Rx is going to take it. You feel what I'm saying? There's no disrespect to Bonnie, but I think Rx got it right now. You feel what I'm saying? And I don't think she's going to let somebody who's a vet in this game, you know, stand in her way. So, I think she's going to take this one. You feel me? That's just me. Um, the Soros versus Caustic. Um, I haven't really seen much of the Soros lately. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I rock with the Soros, though. I think the Soros is cool. Um, I think him and Caustic is something that I don't know. I feel like this matchup is long overdue. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like this joint should have happened maybe like, shit, I don't even want to say two or three years ago. I want to say like, you know, maybe four or five years ago. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I don't know if there's a story or anything behind this battle. I just know both of them been on KOTD for an incredibly long time. But, um, man, in this one, I, I, I might go with Caustic. I might go with Caustic. Um, I think the Soros is cool. I think he, he has some, some dope angles sometimes. And I also think he's a little bit funny. But I think Caustic is just better in terms of bars and wordplay. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I feel like he's just one of those, like, as far as writing goes. Like, I feel like he's the better person in this one. So, um, I go with Caustic in this one. I go with Caustic 2-1. You know, I won't be surprised if um, the Soros... Take it, but I'm, I'm going to just go with Caustic 2-1. You feel what I'm saying? And main event, 
got Disaster vs. Danny Myers. Now, um, if you go back on the channel, you'll see I just interviewed Disaster about this recently. You know, um, he sounds ready. He sounds confident. Um, he He's able to acknowledge where he's went wrong in the past. He's acknowledged, you know, not just um, with the bullshit he's been in, but as far as, you know, certain performances and stuff like that. And I think he's well aware of what he has to come with facing somebody like Danny Myers. You know, um, Danny Myers is somebody that we see who always puts on. You understand what I'm saying? Danny don't really have, like, I don't think we've seen a weak Danny before. You understand what I'm saying? I feel like every time he comes with that intensity, he comes with the bars. Um, the most you can say about Danny is that he be reaching sometimes. You feel what I'm saying? But aside from that, he still comes with fire material. He still comes with a fire performance. You know, um, I feel like the pressure is more on Diz within this battle to be A1 again. You understand what I'm saying? It's first time back on KOTD. Um, if you watch the interview, he said that, you know, he has some stuff that... He didn't want to talk about in the interview that he wanted to save for the battle. So I'm I'm hyped to see this battle. I'm hyped to see this battle. Um in terms of who I got winning, man, this is a tough one because if, if Diz is on his A game all three rounds, I think he can edge out each one. You understand what I'm saying? Um it's they're gonna be close. They're gonna be close rounds, but I feel like on his A game, he could possibly edge at least two joints. You feel what I'm saying? And even if he edges those two joints, it's still most likely going to be a debatable battle. You understand what I'm saying? So this is going to be a classic to me. You feel what I'm saying? Like their, their styles are, are different, but yet so similar in terms of, of angles, the energy. Like, man, listen. This is gonna be this gonna be one of them ones, man. This is gonna be one of them ones. So um, I'm I'm hyped for it. I think overall this is a dope card that KOTD needed. You know, it was a lot of people, you know, trying to say that KOTD fell off or whatever the case. But I feel like for this card, they just took better consideration matchup wise. So whoever put these matchups together, that's who needs to. Continue putting matchups together going forward. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know if it, if it was a difference, but these matchups they seem pretty they seem pretty handpicked, and the person who handpicked them seem like they know exactly what they're doing. So I would say who, whoever really you know pieced together these matchups, they need to definitely continue. You know, um, just keeping an eye on styles and watching footage. And seeing who makes sense style wise, and you know, just continue to keep going from here. And people will stop, you know, saying what they say about KOTD. I mean, um, you know, with with everything RBE's been doing as far as you know their elevation, um, bringing in more, more, more celebrity battle rappers and and god tier battle rappers and things of that nature. You know, it's a lot of people saying that, well, RBE took KOTD spot, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, everybody has that period where they're not going to be doing the same thing they used to do. Like, sometimes, like, when Disaster did take his break from KOTD, of course, that was one of their biggest stars. But you also got to understand that they also have other talent. They have other talent that they work with. They have, you know, a whole platform for up-and-comers. But I feel like what KOTD has to do is do a little more pushing as far as the up-and-comers. Like, this day two, the people that we're seeing on this day two, these need to be the people that eventually make day one cards and, you know, get some type of push. You know, these are the people. Now, y'all have to have standout performances in order to deserve that. Don't think just because you were up and coming and you on KOTD that you just, like, fucking made it. Like, no, you have to still stand out. You got to continue to put on A1 performances, and you just pretty much got to bring your A game every time. You understand? To, to show that you deserve that push. So, you know, the way KOTD works, KOTD is not really a 
heavy political platform. So I'm pretty sure if you show out, they're going to, you know, do what they can to push you. So I would say um, I feel like that's more so the, the direction that KOTD needs to go in right now, just as far as, um, you know, just, just giving the up and comers more of a push, not just um, relying on, you know, the vets to really, you know, forward what they got going on. You feel what I'm saying? It's just so much new and fresh talent out here that's, you know, really putting on shows. And I think KOTD can really, like, you know, take advantage of that. You understand? There's people that's not going to make URL. There's people that's not going to make um, RBE. You understand what I'm saying? So with them having a platform like the GZs, it definitely definitely enables them to, you know, just have more of, of a diverse, you know, type of pool of talent. You understand? So... Um, yeah, so that, that's just my thoughts on the KOTD town business card. I'm going to definitely order my pay-per-view. I'm going to be watching live. I'm going to be on Twitter, tweeting away, giving my updates and everything. So I make sure y'all stay tuned, man. No Mercy Trap New York shit. No Mercy TV.com. No Mercy TV podcast. Y'all know what time it is, man.